refreshment options are sodas and water. Candy grams are available tonight. Put your friend's favorite candy in a bag and put a personal message just to them. Wonderful high school drama magnets and lanyards are also available tonight in concessions. If you could please silence your cell phones now and flash photography is prohibited. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show.
keep you as my prisoner, not like a guest, but pay your fees when you depart and say your thanks. How say you, my prisoner or my guest? Your guest then, madam, to be your prisoner should accord offending, which is for less, for me less easy to commit than you punish. Not your jailer then, but your kind hostess. Come, I'll question you of my lords and yours, tricks when you were boys. You were pretty lordings then. We were a fair queen, two lads that thought there was no more behind than such a day tomorrow as today, and to be boy eternal. Was my lord not the barrier wag of the two? We were as twin lambs that did frisk in the sun and bleed at one another. What we changed was innocence for innocence. We knew not the doctrine of ill-doing, nor dreamed that any did. Had we pursued that light, we'd ne'er be reared with stronger blood. We would have answered heaven boldly, not guilty, the imposition clear, read in the arms. Is he one yet? He'll stay, my lord. Ha! And my request he would not. Hermione, my dearest, you have spoken no better to this purpose. Never. Never. But once. When was it? I pity. Tell me. Why, that was when three cracked ones had soured themselves to death, ere I could make thee open thy white hand and clasp thyself, my love. Then didst thou utter, <clears throat> I am yours forever. Why, lo you now, I have spoke to the purpose twice. The one forever earned a royal husband, the other for some while a friend. Too hot. Too hot! To mingle friendship far is mingling bloods. I have tremor cordis on me. My heart dances, but not for joy. No, not joy. This entertained may a free face put on, derive a liberty from hardiness or from bounty. Bosom. And well become the agent. It may, I grant, but be paddling palms and pinching fingers. So now they are. And they can practice smiles in the looking glass, and then decide. It's for the more to the deep. Oh, that is entertainment. My bosom likes not, nor my brow. Mamilius, art thou my boy? Ay, my good lord. Ah, fex, why that's my baka. Well, that's much thy nose. They say it's mere copy out of mine. Come, Captain, we must be neat. Not neat, but clean the captain. And yet the steer, the hyper, and the cat are all called neat. Still virtually upon his cock. How now, you wanton calf? Art thou my calf? Yes, if you will, my lord. Ah, uh, thou wantest the rough patch of the shoots that I have to be full like mine. Yet they say we're almost as like as eggs. Yet, were it true to say this boy would like me. Wait. Sweet villain! Can that be, my dearest, affection? Thy intention stabs the center. Thou dost make things possible. Not so hell if he communicate us with dreams. How can this be? What means Cecilia? She something seems unsettled. How, my lord? What cheer? How's it with you, best brother? Oh, nothing. Just in good earnest. Uh, sometimes nature may betray its folly, its tenderness, and leave itself a pastime part of bosoms. Look around the lines of my boy's face. Me thoughts I did recoil twenty-three years, and saw myself run breached in my green velvet coat. My dagger unmuzzled, lest it should prove, as ornaments oft do, too gay. Now, my page, will you take extra money? No, my lord. I'll fight. You will. Why, happy man's be told. Now, my brother, are you as fond of your young prince as we do seem to be of ours? If at home, sir, he's all my exercise. My mirth, my matter, my sworn friend, and then mine enemy. My parasite, my soldier, my statesman, all. Why, he makes a July's day as short as December, and with all his varying childness, cures of me thoughts that would thick my blood. Now, my lord, we two will walk and leave you to your greater steps. Hermione, how thou lovest us. Keep in my brother's welcome. Let what is cheap, I am cheap in Sicily be cheap. Next to you and my young Rover, he's a parent to my heart. We are yours in the garden. Shall's attend you there? No, to your own bench dispose you. You'll be found, be you beneath the sky. I'm angling now. Though I'm not perceived how I give line, go to, go to, how she holds up the net, the bill to him. 
and arms her with the boldness of a wife to her allowing husband. Gone already. Go play, boy. Play. Thy mother plays, and I play too. But to disgrace to part whose issue shall hiss me to my grave. Contempt and clamor will be my name. Go play, boy. Play. There have been, or I am much deceived, cuckolds ere now. And as many a man have gates, and those gates may be opened by this against their will, by their next neighbor. Sir, smile, their neighbor, and their pond fished. Oh, if a man would realize that he had become adulterated, oh, he would hang thyself, as all the husbands would. How now, boy? I am like you, they say. Why, that's some comfort. Go, Milius, go play, thou art not a man. And Camillo, though, you will yet stay long. Dick's noted. He would not stay at your petition. Made his business more material. Did you perceive it? They're here with me already, whispering round him. Cecilia is a so forth. How did it come, Camillo, that he did stay? At the decree the treaty. <laughs> Aye, but why? To satisfy your highness me entreating of her most gracious mistress. Satisfy? The entreaties of your mistress satisfy? Hast that thou seen, Camillo? I wife is slippery. This is my lord. I think you must understand that he needs to stay here longer. How do you do? You see things with a vision as blind as a dead man. No, no, my lord. How oh, I am gaunt! How that man who has worn her around her throat like a man. Oh, how thou mightest the spice a cup, and we give him a lasting wink that is far more cordial, and we give drought to him mine enemy. Sir, I could do this, and that with no rash potion, but with a lingering dram that should not work malicious in my children. But I cannot believe this cracked me in my dread mission so softly being honorable. I have loved thee. Make that thy question, and go rot. Dost thou not think that I am so muddy, so unsettled to appoint myself in this vexation, to sow the purity and whiteness of my sheets, to slander and to bring slander to the blood of the prince my son, who I do think is mine, and love is mine, without light ripening to it? Could a man do this? Would a man so blanch? Sir, I must believe you. I do, and will fetch off the key of what provides that when he's removed, your highness will dig again your queen as you were the first. Even for your son's sake. I will accept your counsel despite the course that I have set down. I'll bring no blemish to her honor. None. Go then, leave the countenance to their friend for the feast. Keep with Bohemia and with your queen. I am his cupbearer. If for me he has both and drink the count will not for servant. I will do as you have said. Do it, and thou hast the one half of my heart. But do it not, and thou hast finished thine own. I will do it, my lord. <coughs> Good. Now I will seem friendly, as thou hast advised me. Oh, miserable lady! But for me, what case stand I in? I must be the poisoner of good flicks me, the ground to do it obedience to a master, one who in rebellion with himself will have all that our sons too. If I can write an example of thousands that have struck among the kings and flourished after, I do not do it. But since nor brass, nor parchment, nor stone bears not one but money itself forswear. Do it from now is certain to me and break neck. I must forsake the courts. Happy Sabar reign now. Here comes Bohemia. This is strange. He thinks my favor here begins to warp. Good day, Philip. Hail, most royal sir. What is the news in the court? None there, my lord. The king hath on him such a countenance as he lost some province in a region loved as he loved himself. Even now I met him with customary compliment, and he wafting his eyes to the contrary and falling a lip of much content. Speeds from me, and leaves me to consider what is breeding that changeth us in maps. I dare not know, my lord. How? Dare not? Do not. Do you know and dare not? Be intelligent to me. Tis thereabouts for to yourself, but you do know you must and cannot say you dare not. Good, Camillo. Your changed complexions are to me a mirror that shows me mine changed too, for I must be a party in this alteration, finding myself thus altered with it. There is a sickness which 
put some of us in distemper, but I cannot name the disease, and it's caught a few that get her well. How? Caught me? I beseech you, if you know I which just behold my knowledge there to be informed, imprison it not in ignorant concealment. I may not answer. I must be answered. Dost thou hear, Camilla? I conjure thee by all parts of man which honor does acknowledge that thou declare what incidency thou dost get some harm is creeping towards me. How far off? How near? Which way to be prevented, if, if to be? If not, how best to bear it? <coughs> Sir, I will tell you, since I am charged with an honor and my principal I think most honorable, therefore talk my counsel, which must be as even swiftly followed as I can utter it, or else yourself and I cry lost until so good night. On, good Camilla. I am appointed him to murder you. By who, Camilla? By the king. For what? He thinks, hey, with all confidence, has he declared, has seen it, or has been an instrument devising to it, that you have touched his queen forbiddenly. Oh, then my best blood turned to an infected jelly, and my name be written down with him that did betray the best. How should this grow? I know not, but I charge the same to avoid with throwing the question from the horn. If you dare trust my honesty, which lies in close to this trunk, which you shall bear long upon, away tonight. Your followers I will whisper to the distance, and will by two sets meet the fellow pots in the spirit of the city. For myself, I'll put my fortunes to your service, which are hereby this discovery lost. Do you dare trust my honesty? By the honor of my parents, I have uttered truth. Then, away tonight. I do believe thee. I saw his heart in his face. Give me thy hands. He pilots me, and thy places shall still neighbor mine. It is kind of the way to can the keep of all precautions. Please <coughs> come to take the urgent hour. Come, sir, away. Now, how will you appoint this? 
No, by my life, privy to none of this. You, my lords, look on her. Mark her well. Be but about to say that she is a goodly lady. There to the justice of your heart, lad. Tis pity she's not honest, honorable. When you say she is goodly, ere between you can say that she is honest. But even at the man who has the most cause to grieve, that it should be that she is an adulteress. How will this grieve you when you shall come to clearer knowledge that you thus did publish me? You scarce can write me thoroughly then to say you did mistake. I have told you how I have mistook my lady many times, in fact. Away with her, to prison. He who shall defend her will have her therefore guilty to. There's some ill planet reigns. I must be patient until the heavens look with an honorable, more favorable. I have this honorable grief lodged here, which burns worse than tears drown. Adieu, my lord. I never wished to see you sorry, but now I trust that I shall. Go, go, do our bidding, hence. Your Highness, call the Queen again. Be certain your justice, my liege, lest your decision, decision prove violence on three great points. You, your Queen, and your son. For, for her, my lord, I dare my life lay down and will do it, sir. Please you to accept it that the Queen is spotless in the eyes of heaven and to you, my lord. I mean, in that which you accuse her. If this prove true, I'll keep the stables and lodge my wife. I'll go in couples with her. And it seems she can only be trusted then every woman, to every dram of flesh, be false, if she be. Hold your pieces! Good, my lord. It is for you we speak, not for ourselves. He's me abused by some putter on, and what I do with the bill and I will land down there. I have three daughters, the also love and some nine and five. If this prove true, by mine honor, they'll pay for it. I'll gild them all, not one shall see fourteen. Am I not to be trusted? Well, if this prove true, we need no grave to bury honesty. There's not a grain of just me in the whole dung year. Sir, ah. although I am already proved in what I know, I have sent to sacred Delphos, Cleomenes, whom you both know of stuff sufficiency, to the uh, great Apollo's temple, who shall come with all, whose spiritual counsel shall either stop or spur. Have I not done well? Well done, my lord. Good, good. Now, this justice will be appeared above all, as she has saved shame us so publicly. To bring those all to laughter, where the good truth were known. Good lady, no court in Europe is too good for thee. What dost thou then in prison? Thou good sir, let you have knowledge who I am. You know me, do you not? O oh, worthy lady, for whom much I honor. Pray you then, conduct me to the queen. I may not, madam. To the contrary, I have expressed commandment. Here's a due to lock up honesty and honor from the access of gentle visitors. Is it lawful, pray you, to see her woman? Any of them? Amelia? So please you, madam. I shall bring Amelia to court. I pray now, call her. And madam, you must be present at your conference. Well, be it so, prithee, here's such a due to make no stain a stain as passes coloring. Dearest gentlewoman, how fares our gracious lady? As one so great and so forlorn can hold together our hands of life and grief, which never tender lady hath borne greater. She is something before her time delivered. A boy? A girl, and a goodly babe, lusty and like to live. The queen receives much comfort in it, says my lord. I am innocent that you. I dare be sworn these dangerous, unsafe wounds I think be strew him. He must be told on it, and he shall. The office becomes a woman's best. I'll take it upon me. If I prove honey mouth, then let my tongue blister. And never to my red looked anger be the trumpet any more. Pray you, Amelia, commend my best obedience to the queen. If she dares trust me with her little babe, I'll show it the king and undertake to be her advocate in the loudest. 
We do not know how he may soften that side of the child, for often the silence of pure innocence persuades when speaking fail. Most worthy madam, your honor and your goodness is so evident that your free undertaking cannot miss a thriving issue. There is no lady living so meek for this great errand. Please your ladyship to visit the next room. I'll presently acquaint the queen to your most noble offer. Tell her, Amelia. I'll use that tongue of mine with wit flow from it as boldness from my bosom. Let it not be doubted. I shall do good. Now be you blessed for it. Out to the queen, please, you come something here. Madam, if the queen pleased to send the babe, I do not know what I shall incur to pass it, having no warrant. You need not fear it, sir. The child was prisoner to the womb, and by law and process of <coughs> great nature thence free and enfranchised. Not a party to the anger of the king, nor if any be the trespass of the queen. I do believe it. Do not fear it. Upon my honor, I will stand betwixt you in danger. Little, the whole matter 
and copy of the king. And I, nose, lip, the trick of his frown, nay, the valley, the pretty dimples of his chin and cheek, all colors, no yellow ones, lest she suspect her children, not her husbands. A gross hag, or as a vile lout. What? What do you say, my lord? Nothing. A most unnatural, cruel lord could do no more. Then I will have thee pushed out and burnt at the stake if thou not get out. I care not. It's the heretic that makes the fire, not she who burns in it. But this cruel usage of your queen causes such accusations that make you, yea, scandalous to the world. Scandalous? What? Do you think me a tyrant? If I were a tyrant, where would be thy life? I pray you do not push me. I'll leave. Look at your face, Lord. Tis yours. Jove sent it. A better kind of spirit. So, so farewell. We are gone. I did not, my lord. She can clear me in it. I can, my royal liege. She is not guilty of her coming hither. Oh, is she? Well, will you take up the charge? Do you have what little emotion that you may have for this child? I will give whatever I can, my lord. I will pawn what blood I have left to save the innocent. Oh. Will you not kneel before? I will, my lord. Take up the child. Take up the child. Now, I would like thee to bring this to the better forces of the climate, as like it was dropped here, so it shall have its life. Bring it somewhere deserts, so thou might only have the climate to care for. Go. I'll do this, my liege, and a more present death would be more merciful. Come, more baby. Like they said that ravens and kites might be the nursemaids, and wolves and bears may clear up my gossip's and pity. Poor thing, condemned to loss. No, I will not rear another's issue. Please, Your Highness, first for those who said that the Oracle are come and our sins. We have to be well aware of the belt of the land of the to the court. Good, good. Now, my lords, a trial shall be appeared. Raise all that I see, for this justice must appear before all. These sessions to our great griefs we pronounce, which is openly against our hearts. The parties tried the daughter of a king, our wife, and one of us far too much beloved. Let us be cleared of being tyrannous, as we so openly proceed in justice which will have its due course, despite the truth or the purgation. Now, produce the prisoner. It is His Highness's pleasure that the Queen appear in person here at court. Silence. Read the indictment. Hermione, Queen to the worthy Leontes, King of Sicilia, they are here accused and arraigned of high treason and committing adultery with Blitzenese, King of Bohemia, and conspiring with Camilla to take away the life of our sovereign lord, the king, thy royal husband. Pretense whereof, being by circumstances partly laid open, thou, Hermione, contrary to the faith and allegiance of a true subject, this counsel and aid them for their better safety to fly away by night. Since what I am to say must be but that which contradicts my accusation, the testimony on my part, and no other but what comes from myself, it shall scarce boot me to say, not guilty. You, my lord, best know who least will seem to do so. My past life hath been as continent, as chaste, as true as I am now unhappy. For life, I prize it as I do weigh grief which I would spare. For honor, tis a derivative from me to mine that only I stand for. I appeal to your conscience, sir, for before Polixenes was in your court, how I was in your grace, how merited to be so. With what encounter so uncurrent have I strained to appear thus, if one Jot beyond the bound of honor, or in act or will, that way inclining, 
Hardest be the hearts of all that hear me and my nearest of kin, cry fie upon my grave. I ne'er heard yet that any of these bolder, bolder vices want to impudence to gainsay. Tis true enough, though tis a saying, sir, not due to me. What? Will you not own it? More than mistress of which comes to my name in fault, I do not acknowledge. As for Polixenes, with whom I am accused, I do confess I loved him, as in honor he required, with such a kind of love that might become of a lady like me, with a love even such that yourself and no other have commanded. Now, as for conspiracy, I know not how it tastes, though it be dished for me to try now. All I know of it is that Camilla was an honest woman, and the gods themselves, woting no more than I, are ignorant. But you knew of what to do in their flight, as you knew what you took up in their absence. Sir, you speak a language that I understand not. My life is at your dreams, which I lay down. Your actions are my dreams. You would have mastered my felicities, and I but dreamed it. As your actions are so, so past all shame, your words are so, so past all truth, which does deny concerns more than a babe. For as thy grass has been cast out, like to itself, no father owning it, whose crime is more criminal in thee than it. So thou shalt feel our justice, which you will look for no easier passage than death. Sir, spare your threats. The bug with which you fright me with, I seek. My life be no commodity. <coughs> the crown and comfort of my life, your honor, I do get lost, for I do feel it gone, but know not how it went. My second joy and first fruits of my body, his presence barred like one infectious. My third comfort, most unluckily, is from my breast, the most innocent milk in its most innocent mouth, hailed to murder, and myself on every post proclaimed a strumpet, lastly, dragged here to the open air before I have strength of limit. Now tell me, my liege, what blessings I appear alive that I should fear to die, therefore proceed. But yet fear me not. No life, I prize it not a straw. I tell you, tis rigor and not law. Refer me to the oracle, Apollo be my judge. This your request is altogether just. Therefore, and in Apollo's name, bring forth the oracle. Here shall swear upon the sword of justice that you, Cleomenes, of Benedelthos, and from thence have brought the seal of the oracle by the handle of the great Apollo's priest, and that since then you have not dared to break the holy seal nor read the secrets in it. All this I swear. Break open the seals and read. Hermione is chaste, Blitzenes blameless, Camillo a true subject, Leontes a jealous tyrant, his innocent babe truly begotten, and the king shall live without an heir, that which is lost be not found. Now blessed be the great Apollo! Praise! Hast thou the truth? And my lord even says this here set down. There is no truth at all in the oracle. The session shall proceed. This is mere falsehood. My lord, the king, the king. What's the business? Oh, sir, I shall be hated to report it. The prince, your son, with mere conceit and fear of the queen's feet, is gone. How gone? Is dead. Apollo's angry, and the heavens themselves do strike at my injustice. Oh. Okay. This news is mortal to the queen. Look down and see what death is doing. Apollo, pardon. Oh, please, apply some remedies for life. Heavens, please, pardon my offenses against thine oracle. I will reconcile me to Polixenes. Recall me, <laughs> Camillo. Near woo my queen. Oh, cut my lace, lest my heart cracking it break too. What fit is this, good lady? What studied torments, tyrant, has for me? What wheels, racks, fires, what flame boiling in leads or oils? What Old or newer torture must I receive, whose every word deserves to taste of thy most worst. Thy tyranny, together working with thy jealousies, fancies too weak for boys, too green 
an idol for girls of nine. Oh, to think what they have done and run mad, indeed, stark mad. For all thy bygone fooleries were but spices of it. My lords, when I say cry, woe, the queen, the queen, our gracious, most innocent creatures dead, and vengeance for it not dropped down yet. The higher powers forbid. I'll swear it, she's dead. Oh, thou tyrant, do not repent these things, for they are heavier than all thy woes can stir. Therefore be take to nothing but despair. A thousand knees, ten thousand years together, naked, fasting on a barren mountain, and still storm and winter perpetual could not move the gods to look that way thou wert. Go to, go to. Thou could not talk to thine bitterest. Say no more. Howe'er the business goes, you have made fault in the boldness of your speech. I am sorry for it. All my faults, when I come to know them, I do repent. Alas, the love I bore your queen, lo, full again! I'll not speak of her, nor your children. I'll not remind you of my own ward, who is lost too. Take your patience on to you, and I'll say nothing. Alina, I thought counsel I do profess. Please, take me to them. We shall bury one and one and another together. Please, let us go to the chapel, which will be my pastime. <clears throat> I'm welcome to Kong if the Lord's do let me. Please, take me to them. It is said that the spirits of the dead know off again. This be true, thy mother appeared to me last night. For now was a dream so like awaking, or a vessel so like sorrow. This did break from her. Good Antigonus, since fate against thy better disposition hath made thy person the thrower out of my poor babe, according to thine oath, places remote enough are in Bohemia. There weep and leave it crying. And for thy babe is counted lost forever, Perdita, I prithee thee call it. For this ungentle business put on thee by my lord, for thou shalt never see thy wife, Paulina, more. She melts into the air. I frightened much, I did not time to collect myself. But I do believe that dreams are toys. But I do believe that the good Hermione has suffered death. They should be laid here upon the earth, for death and for life. The storm begins. Poor wretch. Weep I cannot, but my heart bleeds to enjoy to a note such as this. <laughs> Antigonus, a noble man. But first, to make an end of the ship, 
to see how the sea black dragon it, and how the poor souls roared and the sea mocked them, and how the poor gentleman roared and the bear mocked him, both roaring louder than sea or weather. Dame of mercy, when was this boy? Now, just now, I have not winked since I saw these sights. The men are not yet cold under the sea, nor the bear half dined with the gentleman. He's at it now. Heavy matters, heavy matters. But look thee here, boy, not molest thyself. Thou menace with things dying, I am with things newborn. Go you the next way with your finding. I'll go see if the bear be gone from the gentleman and how much he hath eaten. If there be any left of him, I'll bury it. That's a good deed. If thou mayest discern by that which is left of him, what he is, fetch me to the sight of him. And you'll help put him in the ground. Tis a lucky day, boy, and we'll do good deeds on it. <laughs> Shepherd, 
I have heard, sir, of a man who has a daughter who was very young. That's likewise part of my intelligence. Thou shalt accompany us to this place, where we, not appearing as we are, will hold some question with the shepherd. Prithee, be my present partner in this business, and lay a thought beside the thoughts of Cecilia. I willingly obey your command. My best Camilla, we must disguise ourselves. Virtues it was, 
but he was whipped from the court, and he only settled in rogue. I believe they call him Autolycus. Out upon him, prig, upon my life, prig, he haunts wakes, fairs, and bear baiting. Yes, sir, he, sir, he's the one that put me in this apparel. Not a more cowardly rogue in all Bohemia, had you but looked big and spit at him, he'd have run. I must confess to you, sir, I am no fighter. And that he knew I warned him. How do you now? Oh, much better than I was before. I, I can stand, even walk. I will even take my leave of you. Where shall you go? To my kinsmen. Sh shall I bring thee on the way? No, sir, please. Go to your sheep shearing. I must buy spices for it. Fare thee well. Prosper you, good sir. <laughs> Your pocket isn't hot enough to buy your spices. Ooh, I'll be with you at your sheep shearing party too. I laugh to make you garlands of, and my sweet friends, to strew him o'er and o'er, 
What? Like a corpse? No. Like a thing for love to lie and play on, not like a corpse. Or if not to be buried, then quicken in my love. Come, take your love. <coughs> but you do still better as well as done. When you speak, sweet, I have you do it ever. Each you're doing so singular, each particular account that you're doing in the present need, that all your acts are queens. Oh, your queens, your praises are too large, but that your youth and the true blood which creepeth fairly through it do plainly give you out an unstained shepherd. I might with wisdom fear my lord, you wooed me the false way. I think you have as little <coughs> skill to fear as I have purpose to put you to it. But come, our dance, I pray, your hand, my first toe. So turtles pair that never meet to part. I'll swear for it. This is the prettiest slow-born lass that ever ran on the green sward. Nothing she does or seems but smacks of something greater than herself. <coughs> Too noble for this place. He, he tells her something that makes her blood look out. Good snooze, she's queen of curds and cream. Come, strike up. <coughs> Manners, manners, we stand upon our manners. Come, strike up. Indeed, sir. 
There are many prisoners abroad, and it behooves men to be wary. Fear not, thou man, thou shouldst lose nothing here. I hope so, sir, for I have many parcels of charge. Pray you now. Bite! We'll buy the other things anon. Let's first hear Mo ballads. Oh, well, this is but a merry ballad, but a very pretty one. Let's have some merry ones. But this is but a merry one, and it goes to the tune of the Lady Adele. <laughs> There's scarce a maid westward, but she sings it. Tis in request, I can tell you. We can both sing it. If thou wear a part, thou shalt hear. Tis in. Three parts. We had it in a month ago. Well, I can bear mine own part. You should know tis my occupation. Have at it with you. <sighs> Have you father? I have, but what of him? No seal of this, neither does nor shall. 
He thinks of fathers at the nuptial of his son and guests, and that best becomes the table. But pray him once more, is your father not grown and capable of reasonable affairs? Can he not speak? Here, no man for man dispute his own estate? Why is he not bedridden again doing nothing but what he did being childish? No, good sir, he has his health and ampler strength indeed than most have of his age. You offer him, if this be so, a wrong something unfilial. Reason my son should choose himself a wife, but as good reason, the father, all whose joys but fair posterity, should hold some counsel in such a business. I yield all this, but for some other reasons, my grave sir, which I do not that you know, I not acquaint my father of this business. Let him know it. He shall not. Prithee, let him. No, he must not. Let him, my son. He should not grieve at knowing of thy choice. Come, come, he must not. Mark our contract. Mark your divorce, young sir. Whom, son, I dare not call, thou art too base to be acknowledged. And thou, old traitor, I am sorry that by hanging thee I can but short thy life one week. And thou, fresh piece of excellent witchcraft, who of course must know the royal fool thou copest with. Oh, my heart! I'll have thy beauty scratched with briars and made more homely than thy state. And for thee, Bonvoy, if I may ever know thou dost but sigh that thou no more shalt see this knack, we will bar thee from succession. Follow us to the court. Thou, Charles, for this time, though, we free thee from the dead flow of it. And you, enchantment, I will devise a death as cruel for thee as thou art tender to it. Even here undone, I was not much afeard, for once or twice I was about to speak and tell him plainly that the selfsame sun which shines upon his court hides not his visit from our cottage, but looks on a light. Will it please you, sir, be gone? I told you what would come of this. Beseech you of your own state, take care. This dream of mine, being now awake, I'll clean it no inch further, but milk my ewes and weep. Why, how now, mother? Speak ere thou die. I cannot speak, nor think, nor dare to know that which I know. Oh, sir! Oh, cursed wretch! Who knew this was the king's son, and would have ventured to mingle faith with him? I'm done! I'm done! If I might die within this hour, I might die what I desire. I look you so upon me. I'm but sorry. Not feared. Delayed. But nothing altered what I was. I am. More straining on for plucking back, not following my leash on <coughs> Gracious, my lord, you know your father's temper. At this time he will allow no speech, which I do guess you do not purpose to him. And in hardness he will enter your sight as a guest. I fear till the highness of his jury settle come not before him. I not purpose it. I think, Camilla? Even she, my lord. How often have I told you to be thus? How often said my dignity would only last but till it were known? I cannot fail, but by the violation of my faith, and then let nature crush the sides of the earth together and arm the seas with them. Lift up thy hooks. For my succession, one me. Father, I am heir to my affection. Sir, this follows. If you shall, not, if you shall undergo this life and not change your purpose, make this Celia. I think Leontes welcomes you and opens his free arms, speaking his welcome forth. Thus we set off. Fortune speed us. Camilla, the sea sun. Let your speed the better. Something good to make the perfect woman, 
She you killed would be unparalleled. I should think so. Killed! She I killed! Though thou strikest me sore to say that I did as my tongue is in my butt. Please, Polina, say so but seldom. Not at all, goodly lady. You've spoken a thousand things that would have done the time more benefit. You wasted your kindness better. You're one of those would have him wed again. If you would not so, you pity not the state, nor the remembrance of his most sovereign name. Consider little what dangers may drop upon his kingdom and devour insert lookers on. What were more holy than to grace the bed of majesty with a sweet fellow to it? There is none worthy respecting her that's gone. Besides, could the gods rock fulfill their secret purposes? Didn't the divine Apollo's oracle say that King Leontes shall not have an heir until his lost child be found? Which it shall. Is it at all as monstrous as my Antigonus Break him of his grave and come against me, give perish with the infant. Tis your counsel, my lord, to the heavens oppose at will. Care not for issue, the crown will find an heir. Polina, how blessed am I thy square counsel? How I have lost the virtues of thy wife. How I have lost the ability to take treasure from her lips. And left them more rich than what they will be. I will take none but what you say. I don't have no wife until that gets me. Will you promise never to marry but by my free leave? Yea, by none but the heavens themselves. Then, good my lords, bear witness to his oath. You tempt him over much. Unless another as like Hermione as in her picture affront his eye. Good man! I have done. But if my lord will marry, if you will, sir, no remedy, but you will give me the office to choose you a wife. She shall not be as young as her former, but should as much as walk in your first queen's coat. It should be joy to see her in her own. I will not marry until thou biddest us. That shall be when your first queen's again in breath. Never till then. Good. I will have no wife, nor be that good wife. Therefore, fear no wife. One that could doubt himself in floors out of the place of this princess, she would parasite with the help, desires access to your high presence. Go, Cleomenes, go bring them upon us. Still, I think it's strange that you would stay upon us. Had our prince, jewel of children, seen this hour, he'd have paired well with this lord. There was not a full month between their births. Cease, no more. You know he dies at the end when he spoke of them. Sure, when the gentleman may appear before us, thy speeches shall furnish me of reason. Oh, there come. My good gentleman, your mother was most true to wedlock, prince, for she had printed your royal father off conceiving you. Were I but twenty-one, your father's image is so hidden you that I might call you brother like I did him. <clears throat> and then I talk of actions long since past, since before my transgression. Graciously, we welcome you and your princess, a goddess. Oh, alas, I have lost a couple betwixt heaven and earth since I sinned against thy father, whom I wish nothing but to see again. By this command have I here touched Cecilia, and from her bring you all the greetings that the king at friend sent his brother. His brother? Oh, my gentlemen, I have been forgiven for what I have done. Good sir, your father is a heavenly man. Thank you, thank you, that precious lord. Oh, if I had a son and a daughter, how I wish they were as sweet as things as you all. Most noble sir, that which I shall report will bear no credit when not the proof so nigh. Bohemia greets you himself by me, desires you to attach his son, who has his dignity and duty both cast off, fled from his father, from his hopes, and with a shepherd's daughter. What, Bohemia? Where? Here in your city, I now came from them. I speak amazedly, and it becomes my marvel and my message. She report while she was hastening, and the chase of scenes with this fair couple meets me on the way, the mother of the seeming lady and her brother, having both their country quitted with this young prince. Camillo has betrayed me? Whose honor and whose honesty till now endured all weathers? Lay it so to his charge. She's with the king, your father. Camillo with him? Camillo, I now speak with her. Who has these poor men in question? Never saw a wretch so quick. They kneel, they kiss the earth, or swear themselves not to as they speak. <coughs> Bohemia stops his ears and threatens them with diverse deaths and death. Oh, my poor.
poor mother, the heaven set spies on us, will not have our contract celebrated. You two are married. We are not, nor are we blended to be. The stars I see will kiss the valleys first, the odds for high and lows alike. My lord, is she a princess? She is when once she is my wife. Oh. I do think at your good father's speed that that map will not come too soon. Tis a pity, for as virtuous as her beauty is, her worth in and of itself is not much, at least to your father. Oh, a shame. Yes, for Should fortune, visible and enemy, chase us with my father, how or no job hath she to change our loves? Beseech you, sir. Remember, since you owe no more time than I do now, step forth, my advocate. At thy request, my father will grant precious things as trifles. What is true? Your mistress would be but a trifle. Sir, your eye hath too much youth in it. Not a month before your queen's death, she was worth more gazes than what you look on now. I never thought of anything but her in gazing on her. Still, thy petition is left unanswered. I will go to your king. I will see what I may do, so that I might gather you and bet back into his good graces. Come, my lords, we have much to discuss. Very 
have a fortune. Come, boy, I pass well children, but all my sons and daughters shall be gentlemen born. You are well met, sir. You denied to fight me the other day because I was no gentleman born. I see you are now a gentleman born. Aye, and have been so any time these past four hours. And also have I. Indeed you have, but I was a gentleman born before my mother was a gentleman born. For the prince took me by the hand and called me brother. And then the two kings took my mother by the hand and called her sister, and then the prince my brother and the princess my sister called my mother mother. <laughs> and so we wept. And those were the first gentleman-like tears we ever shed. And we shall live, son, to shed many more. <sighs> Sir, I beseech you. I hope you can forgive me for the offenses I have done unto thee and to report back to my master. Wilt thou amend thy life? Aye, sir. Give me thy hand. I'll swear to the king thou art as honest a true fellow as any in the invoking yet. For if it be ne'er so false, a true gentleman may swear to the prince on behalf of his friend, and I'll swear to the prince that thou art a tall fellow of thy hands, and thou wilt not be drunk. But I know thou art not a tall fellow of thy hands, and thou wilt be drunk. <laughs> but I'll swear it anyway. <laughs> and I would thou wouldst be a tall fellow of thy hands. I, sir, and I will prove so to your worship. Indeed, prove a tall fellow of thy hands. For if I should think that one can be drunk, being a tall fellow of thy hands, trust me not. Come, the kings and princes, our kindred, are gone to see the queen's picture. Come, we'll be thy good masters. <laughs> Comfort may be. 
that no man will mock me, for I will kiss her. Good, my lord, for there, the readiness upon her lip is wet. Your mind, if you kiss it, stain here only with oily painting. Shall I draw the curtain? No, not these twenty years. So long could I stand by and look around. Either prepare, you presently quit the chapel, or for more amazement, if you can behold it, I'll make the statue move indeed. Send and take you by the hand. But you may do. Please, let be. It is required you must awake your faith. If there is anyone who thinks this is unlawful business I am about, let them depart. My lords, keep silent. No foot shall stir. Music, awake her. Strike. Tis time to send. Be so no more. Approach. Strike all that look on with marvel. Come, I'll fill your grave up. Stir, nay, come away. Bequeath death to your numbness. For from him, dear life redeems you. You perceive she stirs. <coughs> Start not, for her actions are as holy as you hear my spell is lawful. Do not shun her until you see her die again, for then you kill her double. Nay, present your hand, in youth you woo her, but in age is she the suitor? Oh, she's more. That if, you, if this be magic, let it be as lawful as he did. That she is living. <coughs> Words have told you she should be cooed to that like an old tale, but yet she speaks not. Mark a little while, and she shall. Fair madam, kneel and pray to your mother's blessing. Turn, good lady, our perdita is found. You gods, look down and from your sacred vials pour your graces upon my daughter's head. Tell me, mine own, where hast thou been preserved, where lived? How by my father's court, for thou shalt hear that I, knowing by Paulina that the oracle gave hope thou wast in being, have preserved myself to see the issue. There is no time for that, lest there appear to push this trouble. Your joys with like relation. Go together, you precious winners all. Your exaltation partake to everyone. I, an old turtle, will wing to some withered bough, and there my mate, who will never be found again, lament till I am lost. Peace, good Polina. Now, my friends, as we have been first to sever, let us give discussion to that which we have lost, that which we have found, since that is severed. Now, preciously lead away. Can you hear? 